camper van road trip to New Zealand? If so, you probably want to know what campsites look like. When you're in a camper van, one of the places you can stay is a holiday park, which is basically just a fancy way of saying a campground with all sorts of facilities like showers, kitchens, internet sometimes, but it doesn't usually work that well. Holiday parks are great, but sometimes they can be expensive. Yeah, expect to pay $15 to $25 per person each night. But sometimes it's worth it because you really need that shower. True story. Well, we're about to give you a tour. At holiday parks, you have a numbered campsite. And some holiday parks even have rooms that you can stay in if you need a break from your camper van. They have kitchens. And some kitchens have music playing so you can rock out. <laughs> some even have beaches. Sometimes there's pools. Some holiday parks even have grills. What's that doing in there? Even have Holiday parks have showers, usually with hot water. And they got nice bathrooms too. And most holiday parks have laundry rooms, so you can wash those smelly clothes, which I promise you, you'll need to take advantage of. Um, it's typically three or four dollars for a wash, and the same price to dry your clothes. Holiday parks usually have internet available, but it's not always the best. They'll have spots to dump your gray water and fill your drinking water. Pumping and dumping. Another option for camping is going to DOC sites. AKA Department of Conservation. Thank you, Ben. They are typically pretty basic, usually like an outhouse or drop toilet. Some of the really fancy ones have flushes. And they're usually pretty cheap, either free or 10 to $15 per person, which makes it really nice if you're on a budget. Freedom camping, which essentially means you're camping in a parking lot. One big free for all. But sometimes they have really nice views, like this creek or sometimes the ocean. Your van does have to be self contained, meaning that you have a toilet and a gray water tank. But it's free! And sometimes freedom camping means you get an entire beach to yourself. But you do need to check the laws and regulations in the city or region that you're in to make sure that you you can freedom camp. Wah, wah. There are actually a handful of apps that are really helpful for finding campgrounds, holiday parks, and freedom camping spots all around the country. You can find other people's reviews, you can see how much they cost, and what facilities to expect. So it's really helpful when you're trying to find a place to camp for the night. For more information on that, and for all other New Zealand camping tips, head to the link below because we've got you covered with so much information, it's gonna make your mind burst. <laughs> making breakfast while oh, I lay in bed. <laughs>